to Clinton Crane, our next governor. Again, we interrupt our musical program to bring you a last-minute flash on the hotly contested gubernatorial primary election. Randolph Hawthorne, Clinton Crane's closest challenger for the governor's seat, has just conceded the primary. I'm so proud of you, dear. Well, Mark, I hope we do as well in the general elections this fall. Don't worry, you'll win. You may not make political history, but at least your wife will be the most beautiful woman ever to live in the governor's mansion. <laughs> now, Mark, flattery will get you nowhere. Clinton couldn't think any more of you, no matter how many nice things you say about me. That's right, Mark. You know, as a campaign manager, you're the tops. Who says two lawyers can't get along together? If you political experts will excuse me, I'll be back in a minute. Pardon me. Well, Miss Crane. Yes? I'm from the Evening Express. I'd like to get a story from you. From me? Oh, well, I'm afraid it wouldn't be very interesting, but my husband... The wife of a candidate is always good coffee, Miss Crane. Well, I eat two eggs for breakfast, sometimes a slice of toast. That's your background, the way you were raised, went to college, you know, family ties, human interest stuff, where you met your husband. Oh, nothing very special ever happened to me. I've led quite an ordinary life. Of course, I've been socially active since I married Mr. Crane. I can see I'm not going to get much cooperation from you. So I went to school, was raised in a little Midwestern town. Had one father and one mother. I'm an only child. I met Mr. Crane when I went to his law offices to have him handle an unimportant case. It was a matter of paying his fee or marrying him. I'm afraid that really isn't very interesting, but I would like to say that I think Clinton Crane will make the best governor in all the world. I'll quote you. Please do. Thanks for the interview. It's a great night, Gina. Your life will be different from this point on. Well, I hope not too different. I've been very happy. And you're going to be happier. I'll see to that. Why don't you start by making good on one of your campaign promises? That's right. You did promise me something. Remember? This sounds like it's going to cost me a lot of money. Oh, I promised to buy you a fur coat if I won the primaries. Not just a fur coat, Clinton. A mink coat. Well, I hope making good on all my campaign promises gives me as much pleasure. A mink it shall be. We're particularly proud of this coat. It's one of our latest creations. This is one of our finest ranch minks, Mrs. Crane. We were very fortunate to get these choice skins. The supply is so limited. I can't tell you how thrilled I am to have you visit my shop, Mrs. Crane. I've known your husband for years. He told me you've been friends for a long time, Mrs. Emerson. We can go back to the days I chased ambulances, can't we, Edna? <laughs> you usually caught them, too, Clinton. I couldn't now. I can't run that fast. I always knew you'd be a great lawyer. Even if we don't buy the coat? Oh, the coat. <laughs> I mustn't let friendship interfere with business. This is an original design. Notice the full sweep. It is lovely. Don't you think so, dear? Yes, I do. Would you like to try it on, Mrs. Crane? Oh, yes, I would. Thank you, Barbara. This should look stunning on you. The shade of the fur will blend perfectly with your coloring. Better get your checkbook out, Clinton. I think we've got a sale, Floyd. When you model a coat, we can't miss, baby. Mm -hmm. Take this to the workroom, will you, darling? All right. I've always wanted a coat like this. You'll be the envy of all your friends, Mrs. Crane. Do you like it, dear? Yes, very much. Do you think we should buy such an expensive coat? If you like it, sure. Oh, say, how much is it? $5,000. And, of course, the tax. I guess I spoke too soon. I think I can handle him. Mink someday, Jenny. It's uh, very becoming. May I compliment you on your taste? Oh, Mr. Crane, this is Floyd Durant, our assistant manager. Not Clinton Crane. Yes. It's an honor to serve you and your charming wife. I had no idea you were the Mrs. Crane. I'd be very happy to deliver the coat personally. 
I live at the Fairmont Arms Apartments and pass your place on the way home. It would be no trouble at all, I assure you. That won't be necessary. I'll expect you at nine this evening. It's a pleasure to take money from you. Did you deliver the coat in the morning? Of course. And thank you very much. Very nice to have met you, Mr. Crane. And you too, Mrs. Crane. Good night. Good night. I want you to leave her alone, Floyd. I don't know what you're talking about, Mrs. Emerson. Oh, no? Look, Floyd, I'm not going to stand by and see you make a fool of Barbara. Suppose I tell you I'm on the level. It'd only be wasting your breath. You're a good salesman, and I'd like to keep you. But if you want to stay here, you'll have to leave her alone. Why don't you tell the kid to stay away from me? <laughs> that would only make you more interesting. No, Floyd, it's up to you to see that she gets over her silly crush. I insist upon it. Just a minute. Darling, and figured you might be home. I, uh... I was just about to phone you. I thought we might get together a little later. Oh, I haven't seen you for three hours. It seems like three days. I've missed you too, Barbara. Oh, I love you so much, Floyd. I can't wait to tell the girls in the shop about us. I bet they'll be surprised. But they know we've been seeing each other. What's so surprising about two people being engaged? Maybe it's because one of the two happens to be a certain Floyd Durant. I've been warned against you. Edna Emerson? No. But don't worry, I didn't believe it. Where's my picture? I hope you're not tired of looking at me. Uh, it was, it was here a minute ago. <laughs> you, uh, you must have fallen down. Sure I wasn't pushed? Positive. How about going over to the Bluebird? We could, uh, have a few dances. Oh, that would be fun. We haven't been dancing in a long time. Oh, I just remembered. Mrs. Emerson told me she'd phone me about some advertising ideas. She should be calling back in a few minutes. I'll wait with you. No, I'll see you to your car. Now, you go ahead and reserve a table, and uh, I'll meet you later. like my phone. Maybe it's Edna. I'll be right back. I didn't hear a phone ring. You're right, baby. It wasn't the phone. Stairs. Why did you walk out on me, Floyd? Does that look like I walked out on you? The police were hot on my tail, Jenny. I didn't want to leave them to you. As soon as I thought it safe to show my face, I went to your apartment, but you had moved. Someone said you left town. I didn't think I could compete with that little redhead. I was just giving her a line. She meant nothing to me. You should have known no one could ever take your place. You look more beautiful than ever. All right, Floyd, let's have it. What did you want to see me about? 
Does an old friend have to have an excuse? Don't tell me you're turning on all that charm without a reason. Still the suspicious one. Just for your information, I have no bank account of my own. My husband gives me a small cash allowance. You've always had all the answers, Jenny. I'm just trying to answer some of the questions running through your mind. I can change for the better, too. Of course, I haven't done as well as you have, Jenny, but I'm satisfied at the present. And one of these days, I'll go into business for myself. It's hard to believe. You holding down a job. Well, we both had our surprise for the day. We had a lot of great times together, Jenny. And we did all right for ourselves until we got too ambitious. <laughs> Remember old man Comstock in Chicago? He felt so hard for you, he wouldn't even go to the police. That's all past, Floyd. I never let myself think of those days. Your husband reminds me a little of Comstock. They're both about the same build and age. I don't suppose your husband knows anything about us. No. Clinton never asked me any questions I can't answer. Well, you finally got your mink coat. Yes. Happy? Of course. I've never been happy with anybody but you. That's all over, Floyd. I was an awful heel, Jenny, but I've changed. Now that we've found each other again, let's make the most of it. Jenny, Jenny, baby, I still feel the same way, don't you? Oh, please, this is all crazy. Are you in love with your husband? He's been so good to me. Perhaps it is best for you if we don't see each other again. But, Floyd, we have seen each other again. Clinton. Huh? Oh, hello, Gina. I must have fallen asleep. You shouldn't have waited up for me. I guess I just dropped off. Where have you been? I stopped in to see one of the girls about the hospital benefit we're giving. Oh, before I forget it, Edith Henderson telephoned an hour ago. Said she wanted you to call her in the morning. Isn't she on that committee? Well, there are several committees. I know how you feel, Clinton. We don't seem to be able to spend much time together. If you prefer it, I'll beg off. They can get someone else. Oh, I wouldn't think of it, dear. It's a worthy cause. Besides, the wife of our future governor should be active in all important social movements. Well, I try to do whatever I can. You've been a great help to me, Gina. I'm proud of you. You're a charming hostess. You're clever enough to cultivate the proper people. And although you flirt a little with the men who are important to me, you do it so their wives never get jealous. Maybe I'm a politician, too. You know... It flatters a man's ego to be married to a woman much younger than himself. I'm going to tell you a secret, dear. I wasn't sure that I could hold you. I knew you'd meet younger, more attractive men. You've made me very happy. Got to hand it to you, Jenny. You certainly have that man fooled. Cindy believes what he wants to. He's in love with me. And you're in love with the idea of being the wife of the governor? Of course. I'll have everything. Security, position, power. Everything I've ever wanted. I guess that lets me out, doesn't it? You know, it wouldn't take much to blow that dream bubble of yours sky high. Why should there be a scandal? We can be careful. Nobody has to know. When I said I had everything, that included you. I guess you were meant to have everything. You haven't changed at all, Jenny, have you? Not so far as you're concerned. 
It's a beautiful night. Let's go for a walk along the beach. It's a good idea. Isn't it lovely out here? Yes. Cigarette? Thanks. Why did you lie to me? What are you talking about? Your bank account. At 10 o'clock this morning, you had a balance of $30,000. I have a way of finding out things. So you've changed. We've found each other again. Let's make the most of it. What a fool I was to believe you. I was thinking you might make me a little loan. Fifteen thousand dollars would just about take care of me. I know the game as well as you do. Once you start paying off, it never ends. You're making a big mistake, Jenny. I'm not afraid of you. You'll never get one cent from me. Remember that. And don't ever try to see me again. Now you're angry now, but uh, you'll cool off when you realize how fair I am. Listen to me. And listen very carefully. If you interfere with my life again, I'll, I'll kill you. Yes, this is the Crane residence. Mrs. Crane isn't in just now. Oh, I don't know when she'll be back. Do you want to leave your name? No. I'll phone later. Thank you. speaking. No, Mrs. Crane isn't here. Oh, hold the wire. Mrs. Crane just came in. It's for you, Gina. Hello, darling. Have a busy day? Yes, it's a rough job corralling votes. I'm glad I'm not running for president. Hello? I want to see you, Jenny. Well, I'm very busy these days. Hello? Hello? We were disconnected. Who was it? I don't know. He said something about a donation. Well, if he wants money, you'll hear from him again. I'm sure I will. And then I said, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not making idle promises. I give you my solemn word that I'll serve you faithfully. Don't you think that sounds sincere? What's the matter, dear? Something on your mind? Oh, just you. I think that was a lovely speech. Had me carried away, just like your audience. I beg your pardon, Mrs. Crean. There's a messenger boy at the door. Here's a letter. Wants to deliver it to you personally. That's strange. Well, don't worry about it, dear. Find out what it is. Of course. Mrs. Crane? Yes. Sign here, please. Thank you.
Hey, Mrs. Crane. When you threatened to kill me, Jenny, you forgot that blackmail picture you posed for in the walk. I'll be home at 8 tonight. Be here. Because the next time I telephone, I'll talk to your husband. What's happened to you? I thought I'd fix my makeup a bit. What was the important letter? A contribution from a Mrs. Bennett for our children's milk fund. Guess she thought if you got hold of it, you'd spend it on the election. <laughs> I probably would. How'd you like to go to a picture show tonight? Oh, I'm afraid I can't, dear. I've got to pick up several more donations. Would you like to go along with me? I can't promise you a very exciting evening. Well, perhaps I'd better stay home with that. I have a couple of speeches to write, some phone calls to make, and Mark Emery might drop over. You don't have to make excuses to me. I'll hang this up. No, I'll do it, dear. Yeah. I told you I'd meet you later. Yes, I know. You told me the same thing the other night. I waited at the Bluebird till almost midnight. But I told you how that happened. Not to my satisfaction. If you don't want to see me, why don't you just say so? <laughs> now, don't talk like that, Barbara. <laughs> you know I'm crazy about you. I'd ask you to stay, but someone's coming over to see me about a big deal. Now, I'm only doing it for us so we can be together. What kind of a deal are you talking about? Now, you wouldn't understand. You've just got to trust me. Now, run along like a good When girl. you're trying to get rid of me, you must be expecting a woman. All right, it is a woman. So what? She wants to set me up in business. You don't expect me to turn that down, do you? Mrs. Bolton wanted to set you up in business, too. I didn't believe it when I heard it, but I do now. All the stories they've been telling me are true. What difference does it make where you get the money so long as you get it? And I thought I was in love with you. I despised myself for being such a fool. But I despised you more for making me feel so cheap. How contemptible can a man get? I hate you. I hate you. Stupid little fool. Get out of here. Do you hear me? Get out. Did you bring the money, Jenny? No, I didn't. We'll settle this once and for all. There's nothing you can tell the police, Floyd, that won't implicate you, too. I'm willing to risk a year or two in prison for dough like that. Remember, Jenny, you've got much more to lose than I have. I don't know why I bother even talking to you. I'll go to your husband. He'll pay plenty for this. Let me see. Uh, 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 mustn't touch. Shows you to good advantage. The gentleman with you was named Montgomery, wasn't he? Owned a chain of drugstores. What's the least you will take for it? Fifteen thousand. You've thirty thousand in the bank, that's only half. Remember, Jenny, we always split fifty-fifty. I can't touch any of that. It's a joint account my husband would know. How much can you spare now? Oh, Fifteen hundred. Maybe two thousand. I'm not interested in petty cash. Mr. Crane's at home, isn't he? Oh, please don't call him. I'll think of something. Never thought Jenny Hadley would be pleading with me to lay off. Lloyd, you've got to give me a chance. You're right, I have got too much to lose. I've got some jewelry. I we could... seem to be talking about two different things. I want money, not trinkets. Oh, is this the Crane residence? I'd like to speak to Mr. Crane, please. Yes, I'll hold the phone. Can't do that to me.
will be right down. But please serve my breakfast right away. I have to dash for a train in a few minutes. Yes, Governor. I, I, I mean, yes, sir. <laughs> You're a little premature, but not much. Oh, I think about it all the time. It must just have slipped out. Oh, I can hardly wait till we move to the, the Governor's mansion. I'm going to be very hard to get along with. <laughs> Meanwhile, how about my breakfast? You wouldn't want me to start for a trip on an empty stomach, would you? Oh, yes, sir. Huh? I mean, no, sir. <laughs> Good morning, Mrs. Crane. Good morning, Nora. Good morning, dear. Morning, Gina. You must have had nightmares last night. You rolled and tossed, talked in your sleep. I did. Yes, you kept saying something over and over and over again. I couldn't understand a word you said. Next time, I'll try to be more considerate. Are you all packed? Yes. Even remember to pack your picture. Well, I should have gotten up with you. Did the paper print the speech you made at the Rotary Club? Not a word. Here. Remember him? No, I don't believe I ever saw him before. You have a short memory, Gina. He was the assistant manager at the Emerson Fur Shop. Oh, that's where I got my mink coat. Oh, I remember him now. Well, they'll get her. Her? It could have been any number of women. According to this, women were especially. The police got fingerprints. They have one particular suspect. Did they say who it is? No, but they must have a pretty good idea. <laughs> I'll bet there are a few ladies in town who can't eat their breakfast this morning. What a waste of newspaper. Just think, they could have printed my speech. I'm just more interesting, dear. I don't know how you'd do it. You always manage to say the right thing at the right time. Well, dear, I've got to hurry. I want to stop the office before I catch the train. Take me with you, Clinton. Do you really mean it? I never could drag you on these trips. Well, I feel so lost when you're away. Do you mind if I go with you? Mind? I'd be delighted. I have a couple senators I want you to meet. Between us, we might be able to make them see things our way. We'll do our best. We'll have to hurry. Stay right here. I'll meet you as soon as I check the baggage. Plan to visit some friends up north? Certainly made up your mind in a hurry. You didn't even tell your boss you weren't coming in today. What's this all about? Will you please tell me? You're under arrest. Under arrest? For what? Murder. Who's murder? Floyd Durant. Come along. was just another girl working on a job. Today, she has been indicted for murder. Miss Arnold steadfastly maintains her innocence and insists that a mystery woman was approaching the door of Floyd Durant's apartment as she left by the elevator. 
Unfortunately, if Barbara Arnold's story is true, she has no description of the mystery woman. Many are convinced she is the victim of circumstances. Then there are others who are as equally convinced that she is guilty. The least we could do is get her a good lawyer. Well, I tried to warn her. I knew something had happened, but I never dreamed it would be anything like this. How can they even think that Barbara would do a thing like that? She was in his apartment about the time he was murdered, and that's enough for the police. I'll get her the best lawyer in town. We can't let her down. I'll help. Well, I will too. Don't worry, I'll take care of everything. I'd like to speak to Mr. Crane. Oh, I see. When will he return, please? All right. Thank you. Goodbye. Mr. Crane will be back this evening. He'll help us, I'm sure. Then I saw Steve Crosley, like you told me, Mark. You know, he controls a lot of votes. That's why I thought you should see him. What about Clements? Well, he's with us, too. He sent his best regards to you. You feeling better, dear? Yes, thank you. Haven't you been feeling well? Oh, it's nothing serious. She's been troubled with headaches ever since we left here. I tried to get her to see a doctor, but she wouldn't. I'll be all right, Clinton. All right, all right, I'm coming. I'm Mrs. Emerson, Edna Emerson. I'd like to see Mr. Crane. Is he expecting you, Mrs. Emerson? No, we're old friends. It's very important. Oh, will you wait here, please, and I'll tell him you're here. Thank you. I beg your pardon, Mr. Crane. There's a Mrs. Emerson who wants to see you. She says it's very important. You'll excuse me? Hello, Edna. I hope you'll forgive me for barging in on you like this, Clinton, but I just had to talk to you. Sit down, sit down. Now, what's the matter? You're familiar with this Floyd Durant murder case. Couldn't miss it very well. The papers have been full of it. That's right. He worked for you. Yes. And so did the girl who was accused of killing him. You remember, she modeled that coat for Mrs. Crane. Oh, yes. She means a great deal to me, and I want her to have every chance. I'd feel much better if you were her lawyer. I'll pay you your fee no matter what it is. Well... Pardon me, Clinton. I couldn't help overhearing your conversation. Good evening, Mrs. Emerson. Good evening. Naturally, I don't want to tell you what to do, dear, but with the election coming up... But this girl is innocent, Mrs. Crane. Your husband is just the man to defend her. Well, I appreciate your confidence in me, Edna, but... Clinton, I honestly think it would be unwise for you to accept a criminal case at this time. Don't you? I guess you're right again, Gina. Maybe I am too busy to take a case at this time. It isn't as though we're not sympathetic towards the girl. I'm sure you can find another lawyer. Could you recommend a good man, Clinton? Well... Yes, I think I can. Oh, me? Oh, now, look, Clinton, you know I couldn't possibly take a case at this time. It's a great opportunity for you, Mark. With all the publicity you get, you'd be more valuable to me and to yourself. All right. I'll take the case. If Mrs. Emerson is willing to accept me as a substitute. I have every confidence in Clinton's judgment. Mrs. Emerson wanted me to see you. I'm going to act as your lawyer. That is, if you'll have me. I believe that's been taken care of. The public defender's been assigned to handle the case, Mr. Watson. I've already told him I'm taking over. Well, maybe I should have consulted you first. With all due respect to Mr. Watson, like most public prosecutors, he's a very busy man. With me, you'll be sort of a special client. I'm afraid you don't understand, Mr. Emery. Mark Emery. I can't afford to pay a lawyer. Mrs. Emerson's already taken care of that. I want you to give me a chance to defend you. Well, now, you don't want me to have to give Mrs. Emerson her money back, do you? She's always been so kind to me. And for no particular reason, except that she liked me. Well, I can understand that. And I think it's a very good reason. Well, now that you've accepted me as your lawyer, I want you to tell me everything, exactly as it happened. Well, there's nothing I can tell that I haven't already told the police. This woman you talked of, the mystery woman, do you have any idea who she might be? No. Well, I guess I'll have to dust my junior G-man badge and go to work. We've got to find out who she is. Well, at least you didn't ask me if I really saw her. I want to thank you, Mr. Emery, and Mrs. Emerson, too. You will tell her how very much I appreciate this. It's the first ray of hope I've had. Say, Mark, you're doing all right. 
How many times in the last three weeks do you suppose your picture has been in the paper? I've lost count. If you could get an acquittal in this case, you'd be the biggest man in town. I'd like to, for Barbara's sake. Personally, I think she's guilty. You're wrong, Clinton. I invited Mark here for a nice, quiet evening, not to argue his case. I'm sorry. It really was my fault. We were only talking, dear. Go on. What were you about to say? There is a mystery woman. There were probably lots of mystery women in this Floyd Durant's life. Not like this one. I've already spent more than half my fee for investigation. Then holding back on us, eh, Mark? No, I haven't too much to work on. But I do know that this woman was mixed up in a blackmail deal with Durant in Milwaukee. My investigators got that much from the local police. Did you get a description of the woman? Yes, from her landlady. She was about five foot four, blue eyes, very attractive. Well, I feel like Gina. She wasn't the only woman in Durant's life. We're not trying to discourage you, Mark, but it does seem a little far-fetched that these two should get together after... Well, it must have been quite a few years. No, he meant a lot to her. If she knew where he was, she'd follow him. Or so she said in a letter to Durant that I managed to get hold of. You're just grasping for straws, Mark. No, I'm not. We can crack this case, if only I can track down Jenny Hadley. Jenny Hadley? Yes, she's a mystery woman. Oh. Could Mark know I'm Jenny? Oh, no, he couldn't. He'll never find out I was in Floyd's apartment. I didn't leave any clues behind. I burned the picture, threw the ashes down the drain. He'll never guess that I'm Jenny Hadley, never. Mark can't trace Lloyd's murder to me. I was too smart. Yes, that's it. I was too smart. Mrs. Clinton Crane is here to see you. Well, have her come in. If you please, Mrs. Crane. Well, this is an unexpected pleasure. Hope I'm not interrupting anything. Not at all, Gina. Sit down. I can only stay a moment. I left the house without any money. It's a legal holiday, the banks are closed, and Clinton isn't in his office. Take your pick. I'll take the one with the picture of Andrew Jackson on it. Sure you don't want another to keep Jackson company? No, thanks. I'm just going to a luncheon. $20 for lunch? Two cups of coffee. <laughs> I read in the morning paper where the Barbara Arnold case goes to trial in a couple of weeks. That's right. Have you found out any more about this, Jenny? Not as much as I want. However, I have a couple of leads which might pan out. Clinton still thinks you're wasting your time with this mystery woman of yours. What do you think, Gina? Well, I'm inclined to agree with Clinton. Well, maybe you're a little prejudiced. Maybe. Well, I must be running along. Thanks for the loan. Not at all. Tell Clinton I'll drop over first chance I get, if he doesn't try to frame my defense for me. Goodbye, Mark. I'll see you to the other. Oh, you Mr. Emery? Yes. Well, I have an apartment down the hall from where Floyd Durant lived. I, uh, I'd like to talk to you. Of course. You'll excuse me? Certainly. Come right in. Mark must be very busy, I haven't seen.
seen him in over a week. Did you pay him the 20 I borrowed? Of course. It's a fine place to put the mail. Must have been there for days. I'll speak to Nora about it. Well, here's one for you, dear. It's from the sheriff's office. What have you been up to, dear? Sheriff's office? Let me see it. Oh, it's for jury duty. Didn't know you were in line for it. When were you interviewed by the jury commission? Oh, some weeks ago. Clinton, you can get me out of this, can't you? Why? Well, I've so many things to do. Well, Gina, I'm surprised. It's your duty, sir. Well, let me see that again. Judge Benson's court. Must be the Arnold case. But I know Mark so well, it wouldn't be right for me to... Well, I'm sure that wouldn't influence your decision. You'd vote according to your convictions regardless of Mark. And it's great publicity for me. Say, you're doing court today for an hour. Please, Clinton, There'll I... be photographers, we'll get write-ups. Wife of future governor takes duty as citizen seriously. Don't you understand? It might do us a lot of good. Yes. It might at that. I'll drive you down to court myself. You get your things, I'll get the car. Walter Barton. Get in the jury box, please. Miss Nellie Carter. Go to the jury box, please. Mrs. Gina Crane. This is Gina Crane. Mrs. Gina Crane, please. Here she is. Have a Oh, go to the jury box, please, Mrs. Crane. I thought I recognized her. She was in the shop not so long ago. Tell me, Mr. Barton, have you formed an opinion as to Miss Arnold's guilt or innocence? Well, uh, not exactly. What do you mean, not exactly? I thought you said you were unbiased. Well, uh, well, you just can't help having some idea. I challenged Juror Barton for cause. Juror Barton may be excused. If you should be selected as a juror, could you truthfully say that you would be unbiased? Yes. Mrs. Crane, did you ever meet the defendant? Yes, I bought a coat at Emerson's fur shop. She worked there. Would this acquaintance influence your verdict anyway? Of course not. Have you any qualms about capital punishment if a woman is found guilty of murder? No. Mrs. Crane, did you by chance ever know Floyd Durant? No. Well, if you remember seeing Miss Arnold, surely you must remember him too. I do, but I never knew him. Mrs. Crane would be a satisfactory juror, so far as I'm concerned. Mr. Emery, you may question Mrs. Crane. I have no questions to ask Mrs. Crane. The court is now in session. Solemnly swear at the evidence you're about to give in this case to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Mr. Neal, you are a fingerprint expert? Yes, sir. Are you positive the fingerprints on the paper knife were made by the defendant? Yes, sir. Will you show the court how the knife must have been held to form those prints? Sure. She must have held it like this. I told him not to see Barbara, but he wouldn't listen to me. I understand he was quite a salesman, Mrs. Emerson. Yes, he was. Did he ever cause you any anxiety besides his attentions to Miss Arnold? Some, but nothing too important. And you told Barbara he wasn't the type of man she should consider marrying? No, I was afraid to. Sometimes women marry men just to reform them. Could you tell me if Durant ever mentioned a woman by the name of Jenny Hadley? Not so far as I know. I never heard of her. Yes, Mr. Arnold was a frequent visitor at Mr. Durant's. Can 
you truthfully say that she was there the night of the murder? Yes, I saw her come out of the elevator. She was crying. About what time was that, Mrs. Lambert? It was exactly 8.30. I had just locked the hall windows for the night. It's a company rule, and they're very particular about it. I remember the time, because I was in a hurry to get back to my office to listen to a murder mystery on the radio. Uh, I see. I live across the court from where Mr. Durant got himself bumped, where he was killed. How much space separates the two buildings, Miss Woods? Oh, about five feet. No, I guess it's closer to four. I could see in his apartment if the window shades were up. And they were up that night, Miss Woods? Oh, yes, sir. And what did you see? Well, uh, when I first peeked over, she, Miss Arnold, and that thrill boy, Mr. Durant, were talking. She had a paper knife in her hand. Could this be the one you saw? Could be. I object, Your Honor. Miss Wood's answer is too vague to be entered as testimony. But we know Miss Arnold held the paper knife. And we also know it was the death instrument. Objection overruled. After you saw Barbara Arnold menacingly hold this knife, then what happened? I went to answer the telephone. And when I came back to the window, they were really telling each other off. Can you recall any of this heated conversation between them? Oh, sure. She called him contemptible. She really worked herself up into a lather. Then she said, I hate you. Then she slapped him. Then Floyd told her to get out. Then... Then, then what? The telephone rang again. Oh. And when you got back to the window? Oh, I didn't go back to the window. Got myself a date and went out. Had a nice time, too. That bluebird is some joy. Did you yes, ever yes, see the floor yes, show? I, I know. That will be all, Miss Woods. Thank you very oh. much. Mr. Fred Marlowe. Take the stand, please. Solemnly swear the evidence you're about to give in this case to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you, God? I do. You're certain you saw another woman come out of Durant's apartment the night of the murder? Yes, but I'm positive it wasn't Miss Arnold. No, I've seen her too often to be mistaken about that. Could you identify her if you saw her? I think so. Can you give me a description of this woman who undoubtedly murdered Floyd Durant? Yes. She was about 5'4". And dark hair, pretty, nicely built. She reminds me of somebody that I've seen before, but I just can't remember who it is. Thank you. Your witness. Isn't it a fact, Mr. Marlowe, that you are very nearsighted? Yes, sir. Do you have two pair of glasses? No, just this one pair. May I see, please? Oh, certainly. Thank you very much. Now, Mr. Marlowe, I want you to look around the courtroom and point out to me a woman who looks something like this so-called mystery woman you say you saw coming out of Floyd Durant's apartment the night of the murder. Oh, come, come now, Mr. Marlowe. Please, be specific. Did she wear a hat? What color? Was she tall, blonde, brunette? Was she fat, short? Or what? Come on now, Mr. Marlowe. Just point out anyone who looks something like your mystery woman. There, right over there. Now, uh, you wait to put these on until I reach the person to whom you're pointing, will you please? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, this is the person you mean, Mr. Marlowe? Yes, yes, yes. Ah. Put on your glasses, Mr. Marlowe, please. Uh, I guess I do need glasses, don't I? You certainly do. As a matter of fact, your glasses were being repaired at the Glen Optical Company the night of the murder. Isn't that a fact? Uh, yes, I'd forgot. Uh, thank you, Mr. Marlowe. That'll be all. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Marlowe. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> apartment the night he was murdered and by strange coincidence you were seen to hold the very weapon that later was found in his dead body were you in love with him 
I... I thought I was. And you, too, saw this mystery woman go in after you left? Yes. I had just stepped into the elevator when I saw a woman go toward Floyd's apartment. The elevator doors closed so quickly, I, I didn't get a chance to see what she looked like. You've got to believe me, Mr. Flanagan. It doesn't make much difference what I believe, Miss Arnold. It's what the jury believes. Isn't it strange that when a woman in love sees another go into her sweetheart's apartment, she isn't even curious enough to see who it is? Why didn't you go back and see who it was? I didn't care. I never wanted to see him again. You made certain of that. I object, Your Honor. Objection overruled. I didn't do it. Someone must believe me. Someone must believe me. You can use another one of the pictures we got of Gina Crane. She's been made foreman of the jury. Frankly, I'm confused. I've heard so many different stories, I don't know what to believe. But I don't think Barbara's guilty. Don't tell me you fell for that mystery woman. From the evidence I've heard, and I've listened to most of it, I'd say there is such a dame. Probably lots of them. But I can't see why any gal would kill a cutie pie like Floyd without a reason. There's plenty of reason. He was a chiseler. Can't we get back to Barbara? After all, the question is, are we going to judge her guilty or innocent? Yeah, that's that's right. Right. I don't think we can honestly convict her on the evidence presented. At the best, it's only circumstantial. Miss Norman, Surely you haven't forgotten her fingerprints are on the knife. I'm certain the mystery woman didn't put them there. And the babe next door saw the knife in Barbara's hand. Thank you. I was just about to remind Miss Norman of that. The motive is clear. It was brought out in many different ways during the trial. Barbara expected Floyd to marry her. And when he told her his intentions were not serious, well, she even admitted on the stand that he ordered her out. She killed him. It was cold-blooded murder. Well, tell me, Mrs. Crane, if Barbara was guilty, why do you think she waited until next morning to run away? Yeah. If I'd killed a guy, I couldn't get out of town fast enough. She evidently figured she had nothing to fear. At that time, she didn't know she'd left her fingerprints on the knife. Say, you talk like a lawyer. I guess I get that from my husband, Mr. McLean. I'm the last person in the world that would want to see an innocent person convicted of a crime. But I'm convinced of Barbara Arnold's guilt. I'd stake my own life on it. That's good enough for me. Well, I'm convinced. Let's take a vote. I want to go home. My wife's going to have a baby, and... Well, I've never been home yet when she's had a baby. <laughs> One for acquittal. I'm the one who held out. Say, we all can't be wrong. Well, I don't believe in capital punishment. Well, this is a fine time to make up your mind. But you said on the stand you had no qualms about capital punishment. Say, that's perjury or something. Well, I meant it when I said it on the stand, but then I got to thinking it over and... Well, I just couldn't. And she seemed so sure about that mystery woman. She didn't give Floyd Durant a chance to think it over. You know she's guilty. There, there was no mystery woman. That was completely disproved. Mrs. Crane, your husband thought you might need this. Thank you. There is no news on the Barbara Arnold case, except that the jurors have been unable to reach a decision. What do you want to do, give the dame a medal for bumping them off? You're being very unreasonable, Miss Norman. Really, you are. You're just being stubborn, that's what. Barbara Arnold is guilty of murder, Miss Norman. I think we should let the law take its course. Let's take another vote. We're in accord, ladies and gentlemen. Good. Well. You'll have to fill this out, Mrs. Crane. You see, you give the official verdict in writing to the clerk.
Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? Yes, Your Honor, we have. We find the defendant... No, no, Mrs. Crane. Hand the verdict to the clerk. Oh, you put it in your coat pocket, Mrs. Crane. Read the verdict. There's, there's some mistake, Your Honor. Will you please read the verdict? But, Your Honor, this isn't... Read it! Yes, Your Honor. Dear Mrs. Crane, when you threatened to kill me, Jenny, you forgot about that blackmail picture you posed for in Milwaukee. I'll be home at 8 tonight. Be here. If you're not, the next time I telephone, I'll talk to your husband, Floyd. <laughs> Guilty.